All right, here's another system. It's very similar to the one we just considered, except there is a one in this entry and not a zero. And that doesn't change much. It doesn't change our strategy. It doesn't change the structure of the solution. It doesn't change the dimension of the null space. It just changes the numbers a little bit and it makes it a little bit more difficult to decompose other columns with respect to these two. But these two columns are still our go-to columns for decomposition because they have that nice bootstrapping structure that we discussed previously. So to get the column on the right hand side, we clearly need eight of the first column because that's our only chance to get this eight right. And once we have eight of this column, which gives us eight in the second entry as well, we only need to add three of this column to get 811. And we don't need any of the third or any of the fourth. So that gives us our particular solution, eight, three, zero, zero. And we're a third of the way done solving this problem. We now have to determine the null space and I'll prepare the template. And the first element of the null space comes from the relationship of this column to the first two. And by the same approach, the first coefficient needs to be four and the second coefficient needs to be one. Four, because that's our only chance to get the four right. And once we have the four, we also have four in this entry. So we only need to add one of this column to get this five. So we now have a linear combination that produces the third column. But we're after the zero column we're after the non-trivial linear combination of columns that gives us zero because it's throwing in that combination into the mix that changes the variables without changing the right hand side. So to accomplish that we need to subtract the third column. We don't need to involve the fourth one and now we have the non-trivial linear combination of columns that produces the zero column and that's our first element in the null space 4, 1, negative 1, 0. Two thirds of the way done. Now let's capture the remaining part of the null space. And that comes from the relationship of the fourth column to the first two. And, I, and I'll do this column with the signs flipped. You'll see what I'm talking about. So to get this column from the first two, we need to take seven of the first column. And that gives us seven in the second entry as well. So to get to 11, we also need to take four of the second column, none of the third. So now we have a linear combination that gives us the fourth column. And we're after the linear combination that would give us zero. So instead of subtracting the last column, I will actually put the minus signs in front of these two coefficients and a plus one here because minus seven and minus four produce minus the fourth column. So adding the fourth column results in the zero column, which is exactly what we're looking for. So the numbers that we would put here, my negative seven, negative four, zero, and one. And whether you pick your number so that the last number is minus one, or you pick your number so that the last number is one, is strictly a matter of personal preference. I kind of prefer to have the minus one, but a lot of people like to have the one, in which case you have to flip the other sign, the signs of the other numbers, and the two approaches are clearly equivalent. So whether you want a vector that looks like this with a minus one, or one that looks like this with a one, is entirely up to you. Whichever way is more natural for you to think about this process, that's the way you should choose. So there you go, we have the general solution of this linear system, which is the particular solution plus the null space, and we have solved another system just like that. And of course, I am still handpicking the numbers to make the relationships easy to see. And if you're wondering, well, what am I going to do if the relationships are difficult to see? For example, if this zero was not a zero, but a 10. Well, don't worry about it for now. We will later introduce Gaussian elimination, which is specifically designed to convert complicated systems where you can't see the relationships to simple systems where you can see the relationships. But the underlying point is still the relationships among the columns of the matrix and the vector on the right hand side. So what we're doing right now is practicing identifying and taking advantage of those relationships. 
What to do when those relationships are not easy to see? Well, that can wait until a little bit later.